Um, just going through the presentation, it's great to follow James because I think he set this up quite nicely for me. We were ta talking about in the, in the publishing business is how do we leverage more of what we have? And it's not just about necessarily creating content, it's actually trying to get that engagement with the content. How do we get our consumers actually to be involved? And is there an opportunity for us to increase that involvement? It's not good enough just to create a story, we need people to read it, and read it, enjoy it, get it, and really do something with this. And so what I'm focused on is really the retail side, so bricks and mortar, traditional retail, all the things that people think might be going away. But that's where a lot of our product traditionally has been sold, and it is still being sold today. And what I'd like to say is when I quickly I put together a bunch of slides from presentations that we've done over the last uh, probably nine months, and I just pulled a few out here, I think to follow up on James's, it says, how do we increase that engagement? Are there more opportunities about not just who we're selling, but where we sell? And does that change the calculation? And does that give us the opportunity to increase our involvement? And to do that, you kind of need to know what's going on in those places what's going on in retail, what's happening in retail, uh, in order to be able to take advantage of that. And I think there's, there's lots of opportunity. Am I doing it right? There we go. So, let's just think about magazines in this group particularly, but books also. It's just more than words on a page, but really it's about the consumer and who's reading that. So, Let's widen the scope. Let's think about that customer. It's not just about what we used to be. It's just a transaction. I've got a magazine. It costs six ninety nine. I put it on the shelf. That's all I care about. They bought it. Now we really want to broaden that out and say, is there an opportunity to expand that? It's not just about buying. It's about that relationship with that person in that store at that moment. Widen your focus. So beyond that transaction, as I said, and these categories that we have, what's really nice about it, and you think about the retail space, is that there is a magazine pretty much about every damn thing, everything. You can find a magazine about every topic, and you think about retail, there's a retailer just about everything. So it's that, that intersection of those, those, those two things, those three things, the retailer, the content, and the consumer, that we're trying to be able to take advantage of and maybe increase that experience or give us an opportunity that maybe we weren't thinking about before when we were so focused on the transaction. So in today, um, when you think about retail, 45% of U.S. growth, so sales growth, is coming from non-store retail, so e-commerce essentially. And 45% of store-based is real. So you think about what's actually going in terms of sales. Half of it's real, the other half is inflation. And again, looking at retail, it's coming from four places. Pharmacy, club, discount, and C-store. That's where the growth is coming from. We have to be careful in here because even though the growth is extremely high, these rates are high, the large boxes of retail sales are still occurring in traditional locations. Grocery, drug, there are the major players. So even though they might only have a fraction of an increase, those dollar increase could probably beat out e-commerce. So it's an interesting game. If you're a retailer, you think about this completely different because you know where the growth is coming and you have to be there. So it'll change your focus. Retail is fragmented and, and it is changing dramatically. So, you know, urbanization, for sure, as you look up here, age is changing. Income certainly is changing as well. And ethnic diversity. And retail is trying to figure out how to deal with all these things and are going through rapid changes as the population changes, which is a good thing. They need to be able to flex to that population. But so do the products that retailers are selling. So how the products that retailers are selling have a relationship with those retailers and those consumers are gonna be important. And it will indeed change. The interesting thing is that I'm a former retailer. They're gonna to try to figure out how to increase that relationship with their consumers. And again, you go back to magazines. We have that unique relationship with consumers and readers. Retailers are looking for that, for that relationship to be able to increase that. Where is that intersection where all these things might come together? Look at who's growing in terms of um, uh, types of uh, supermarkets or where 
products are being purchased, a specialist, you know, the niche sellers. Supermarkets still, in terms of overall sales, are, are, are strong super centers, you know, the Walmarts of the world, the large targets. Online still, obviously, is, is grown quite a bit. All these places in terms of um, where products being sold, but look at where the growth is going to be. Supermarkets still extremely large, and again, this is through 2023 consumer uh, aggregated con growth rate. Supermarkets still way up there, and that's where we typically have sold our product traditionally. Stores still draw a majority of the shoppers for every single trip type. But look at this immediate use. So that's yeah, so the consumers coming in quick. They're looking to get something they're going to use right now and kind of go down the list all the way down to problem solving in terms of what's driving that trip in the store. And these are unique differences that are going to change. Retailers are looking at these, and again, it's going to change the environment that we shop in. And that environment is changing where we traditionally sell products. The checkout's changing. I foresee a time in the not-too-distant future, kind of picking up on James' uh, theme of change and how it rapidly changes those S-curves. There's going to be an S-curve at the front end of the store. You will no longer have a checkout, and it will not be long from now. And you think about where you typically see magazines, it's at that place where you check out your products. It is going to go away. How that changes the relationship with the retailer and the consumer and the products that are sold in those stores and at those locations in the consumer and the retailer is going to be dramatic. We're going to click and collect. How many folks here have actually placed an order and picked it up at the store? Quite a few picked it up at the store. So I just did a presentation uh, in Canada. So this is a Canadian market. 40% of e-commerce transactions, think about what you would typically think is Amazon, 40% of e-commerce transactions were fulfilled by a traditional bricks and mortar retailer in Canada. So what's happening is that the traditional players or people with a bricks and mortar footprint are figuring out how to play that game. Mm -hmm. So where we're selling our product is going to change. So when you think about the digital intersection of magazines and how it's being fulfilled, think about, is that gonna get fulfilled in a store possibly? And the answer to that is probably, it probably will. The competition as is laid out just in the magazine business by itself. The competition in retail is absolutely fierce. They will drive a lot of change, and they will drive a lot of change in terms of how we fulfill consumers' needs. And thinking about how magazines intersect with that, how our content intersects with our consumers in those locations, is going to be absolutely critical. Amazon Go is the example of no checkout. I mean, people walk in, and they walk out with whatever they picked up, never got charged. Do we have a magazine in that, in that mix when that happens? When you think about some of the current e-commerce offerings that are made at Walmart, for, as an example, magazines, with a few exceptions, aren't there. That's a problem. That's a problem. Some of that's the physical way we sell. It's based on you know, basically how we have traditionally gone to market. But again, as we think about how the content's going to change and how we interact with consumers, we have to figure out how to play physically in this new environment. How are we going to make our product available? So let's just look at a few things here. Uh, in this evolution, these are coming. Ship to home. Ship to home is the most expensive way to deliver a product. We know this from subscriptions. Subscriptions are extremely expensive. So because of that expense, it's going to try to drive a different way of providing service to consumers. So in-store pickup, curbside pickup, grocery delivery, on-demand, all these things are going to happen all at once. Look at Instacart. Who would have thought, who would have thought that I would be willing to pay more to have somebody go to a store to pick up an order for me? It just seems crazy. And, and pay more money, pay more money. I know of a local retailer who put in Instacart 
into their, into their, and offered it to their consumers. When they did that, they saw over a 2% increase in their overall store volume. Absolutely phenomenal change just from, from making it convenient. I think James talked about this. Let's, let's, let's make this frictionless. We're trying to figure out ways to make it easy for consumers to buy. It's going to be so critical for us to make sure that we are in that mix and we make it easy not just to buy a magazine, but easy to engage with that content. And again, go back to, is there something unique about buying a magazine in a bricks and mortar retail experience that maybe we can leverage and create a different product? It's the combination of the two that maybe uh, we should be looking at. I think all those things can. Think about events. A lot of magazines are working on separate events. Well, there's, a, there's an event happening in a store almost every day when a consumer goes in. There's an opportunity to intersect and to create that kind of mini event. Think about recipes. What, what if some of the recipes that are put out in magazines, we could actually have all the product that goes with that recipe available at a retailer in a nice little package? And when the customer pulled up with their car with a curbside pickup, all those things with the recipe from the magazine went into that shopping basket. Awesome. And that's an easy one. There's plenty of other things we can think about. Think about Home Depot. Think about all the other traditional bricks and mortar retailers and the things that we can do with content and knowledge that would sell product, yes, but actually increase the consumer experience and make it different. So again, it's not just about selling. It's about increasing the engagement with what it, the content that we have for that consumer that keeps them locked in long term. They want to love what they're spending money on. Store does indeed offer scale, right? So we've talked about this already. So the size of the store, the reason these stores are so big is because they can sell product efficiently. The problem is going to be is if you take some of those sales away, all of a sudden that scale gets eroded. So these players are going to be changing in terms of how they handle their business. They're going to have to react, and they will. So again, selling our products in traditional stores isn't going to go away, but the way that we sell them is definitely going to change. As an example, this is a Kantar consulting slide. When you think about health and wellness and the, the two aspects of you know, healthy and wellness, they're two different things. Um, it's, not just about, it's not just about eating well or taking a prescription for my health. Wellness is having a hobby and interest, and you think about our product and what we offer in this health and wellness trend, magazines are, is an example, are something that we definitely have content that retailers would be looking for. Again, how do we move that content into the world of retail that gives us an advantage versus selling in some other location? No category has a stronger presence. Again, this is Kantar. So this is a, actually a third party look at a uh, magazine saying, there's nobody better. There's nobody better at providing content. There's nobody better in terms of knowledge than the magazine category. This wealth of knowledge that we have, we need to move off of that transaction and actually apply that in the retail marketplace. Uh, where shoppers are spending their time, it does cause us to rethink. We have to figure out how to use that phone and actually create or start that intersection. But I would suggest to you that we don't want to leave it there. We actually want to turn that into a, again, a connection with the consumer and hopefully a sale, a sale of a magazine, maybe a sale of something else, a relationship with a retailer that actually takes that sale and takes it off of just a magazine and makes it a broader experience. So all these opportunities that come at us, the, the collaborative opportunities that we have to leverage our product and what we sell, uh, across all of these things, click and collect, meal solutions, special events, all these things can happen in a retail environment. We have, again, great product. We have a great location. We have print. We have digital. All these things can come together and be leveraged in that, in that retail that actually changes mm -hmm. the consumer experience. So if just take this as, as one example. Think about the traditional way of selling a magazine, you know, basically we put, we could put a magazine on a website. We can have loyalty cards that include that. But what if there was social media engagement around that same product? We took pre-orders for 
a bestseller, or maybe even had a continuity program with you know this this month's issue and next month's issue of a magazine. And then if you took the best location, the best result might be a retailer specific. So what about if you said at Target today, you can do this with our magazine, something unique with the retailer, so that the retailer really is engaged and knows that it's differentiating their experience. Putting it all together makes our product come alive in the store and actually offers the retailer and the consumer something that they can't get anyplace else. So again, real quickly, we have great attributes that we can offer uh, to the consumer and to the retailer. We have, again, the unique product. It's, it is extremely uh, profitable. It's serviced by outside companies, so it doesn't take a lot of effort from a retailer's perspective. But I think to go down to the bottom, I think this depth of knowledge within the industry about our consumer is something that we really have to offer. And we have got great readers, great consumers. And one thing we do know is that readers of magazines are great consumers. They buy stuff. They buy a lot of stuff. And so, so from a retailer perspective, that's something that means a lot. And obviously, from an advertiser perspective, that means a lot. Again, how do we bring all those things together in terms of trying to make this a, a unique uh, selling proposition, a unique uh, experience for a consumer? Not something, again, where the content just sits on a shelf, is picked up and taken home and put into the, into the magazine bin. It's really read, engaged, and creates a different experience because of not just what you bought, but where you bought. That's it. Thanks, everybody.